I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button, and I tried. Please die. It looks like oh, you did. That was a bit dark. Yeah. It's also like compared to the other stuff, was a bit dull. Yeah. As well, like yeah. the, there was kind of interest in. Welcome the other back stuff. to Pixie and the Cane. Today we're playing the Stanley Parable. Yeah. So, uh, back at the uh, Stockport office. Close the door behind us. We were allowed to close the door that time. Were you not before? I don't think so. I don't know. I guess we probably there? were. Stanley wondered to himself. Minutes? Days? Centuries? Did something crucial happen while my senses were turned? He made a note to be more careful with time from now on. Fair enough. Still can't get into any of the other rooms. No. I think we are now just replaying again. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, so what other options have we got? When came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Very decisive that time. Absolutely, yeah. Straight away, door on the left, no questions asked. I know what I'm doing. Ah. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Chris still in the decided brink to go yep. up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Synergized paper. <laughs> Papers are too synergized. Oh, <laughs> by a paper guy. Uh, Same narrator's voice from Pushing Up Daisies. I don't know, it seems to be a fairly typical narrator voice. Yeah, it's quite a standard voice, isn't it? It's this kind of well-spoken Englishman. When Stanley looked at the whiteboard, <laughs> he discovered that not all pie charts were the same. Stanley looked at a slide saying, Everyone is unique. And then another slide saying, number of slides on this slide, which contained information in pie chart form about slides. Yeah, this is dull. Right, we're going to ignore the closet this time. Ah, uh -huh. closet ignorance. We went Coming to a stairs, up, didn't we? Stanley walked upstairs to his down. boss's office. Oh, going to go and visit Janice in accounting. Yeah. The red light under here. Not a button though, is it? No. Not like the other ones. Fire hose. Oh, can't spray the place down. Oh, there's a car. He just couldn't do it. We go he home. considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And mm. in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, Maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did ah. doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all no, a dream. I didn't. Did oh, you hear that? What a relief, Stanley felt, to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. This light box is broken. It job. is. He wasn't crazy after all. Showing the default wood he panel. To himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Hey. <laughs> then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating there a voice everything in my head? that I'm doing and thinking? Dictating everything I'm now doing and thinking. Now the voice was describing itself being now considered it's describing by itself Stanley, being considered. who particularly I'm not strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, <laughs> he thought. 
And while he thought it all I don't want to interrupt him. Yeah, yeah, I know. Continue. Spoke to all people in their dreams. The truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. <laughs> now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, <laughs> if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. Okay. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. Hi, Pixel the Nation. Press Welcome back. The mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife okay, and sets. my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Through that entire thing, I had a really good joke to make about the car. Yeah. Stanley began screaming. Wait for it. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. <laughs> I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I uh, must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? Lots your eyes. And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to her, <laughs> and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. Wow. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that <laughs> moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. Then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Well, she should have called the emergency services. I think that's pretty poor decision-making on her part. Yeah, it's very uncaring. So we're now... Okay. And welcome back to Pixie and the Cane. Today we're playing the Stanley Parable. <laughs>